Okay, in the previous segment, we analyzed the Hagen Poisson flow. That's the viscous flow in circular pipes. Okay, and we obtained our velocity as this. And we said that this is the V max. One thing I wanted to say, I did this for the same Poisson flow. Note that there's a negative sign, but this value is negative. That's why this will end up with a positive value. The next step now is actually go ahead and calculate my mean velocity for that. So let's do Q. Q will be equal to UDA because VA is equal to Q, right? Um, so we'll revisit the integration constant. If I write this this way, it's going to be easier for me because Vmax is a constant value as a function of integral, right? Take a look. R squared is a constant. 4 nu is constant. Del P del Z is constant. So I will just simply write as Vmax. Then I will plug it in at the end because I don't want to keep writing the same thing over and over again. Okay? 1 minus R divided by capital R square. Okay? What is, now this is U. What is DA? I discussed this in the previous uh, mini segments, so I'm not going to repeat myself, but it is 2 pi r dr, okay? So then the next step, what is the integral limits? So it's going to be from 0 to capital R. Note that it's not from minus r to capital R, because the r, the little r, defined like this. So it's defined from the center to outside, okay? So that's why it goes from 0 to capital R. Okay, let's continue with the red color. So it's going to be, okay, can I take this 2 pi out of the integral? Oh, yeah. So let's write it this way. Q will be equal to 2 pi V max of integral 0 to R. So if I multiply this R, or rather distribute this by this, right? So let's write it this way. So it's going to be R minus R cubed divided by R square dr. Okay, so I'm almost there. Q will be equal to 2 pi V max times, now this will be R square over 2 minus R to the 4 divided by 4 R square. And I need to evaluate this only at capital R because when I put 0, it will be 0, 0. So that's gone. Okay, this sounds actually easier than the Poisson flow. 2 pi V max capital R squared over 2 minus capital R to the power of 4 divided by 4 R squared. So you can see these become square. So then I need to multiply this by 2. So I get myself 2 pi V max. So it's going to be R squared divided by 4, right? Okay. And in the last step, what I'm going to do is now I'm going to plug this in. And just to remind ourselves, this was... Uh, minus obviously r squared over 4 nu what I need why I need to do this is because you you see that there's a r squared over here there's r squared here so I want to combine them and write in a neater way and if I do that I will get my final number as minus let's not forget that um, 2 will actually cancel like this right so this becomes 2 becomes r to the 4 divided by 8 right there's 2 over here there's 4 over there so 8 nu, let's not forget the pi, del p, del z. Let's take a look whether this is all I have. Yeah, this is all I have. So this will be my q. So it was not too bad to calculate this, okay? And then I will go ahead and find my mean velocity. That's defined by q divided by 8, right? And q is minus r for 8 nu pi, del p, del z divided by a is, what is it, pi r square, pi's cancel, this becomes 2, so I got myself v mean as minus r square over 8 nu, del p, del z, right, let's double check this, yeah, it looks good, this is nice. Let's write here v max as well, for comparison purposes, if you remember, it was minus r square over 4 nu, del p del z. Do you see a relationship between those two? I sure do. And this is what it is. So you can see from this too, right? What you will get is you will get v mean is equal to v max by 2, right? Take a look. This is divided by 8. This is divided by 4. If I multiply this by 2, then I get this. Okay, so this is handy. So it's right at over here. So if I go up over here, if I want to plot this as uniform, let's see, one, two, three, a little bit, it's like 
this, if I want to, you know, a mean velocity, this is the mean velocity corresponding. Okay, so this is simple mathematics, actually, this is nothing to do with fluid mechanics. Well, if we apply this in the fluid mechanics domain, but the fundamentals is directly from mathematics and integration. Okay, what I want to do next is I want to obtain wall shear stress. What is the shear stress at the wall? And if you look at it, what you will get is, we remember, we know this from module one, the very first module, it's going to be del vz del r. In that module, I said that this is, hey, del u del y, right? But now u is vz, and y is perpendicular to the surface, remember that? And this is, r is the perpendicular to the surface when I have cylindrical polar coordinates. Mu, that part is easy. So my vz is this, I'm going to take the derivative of that with respect to r. And if you look at it, these are constants, and this is gone, right? So I have negative sign, negative. So this is going to be 2r divided by capital R square, right? So I will simply write it down. Let's write it. It's going to be r square over for nu. That was a negative, so let's show the details. Del p del z times that term, as I mentioned to you, it becomes minus r divided by capital R square. Okay? And obviously, wall. Where is wall defined in terms of the variable? r is equal to capital R. Good. So now let's plug it in. So tau wall then will be equal to, okay, minus is cancel. These becomes 2. And when I plug r is equal to capital R over here, so this cancels. And I have an R over here, so this and this cancels. Okay, I have a lot of cancellations, you can see. R over 2 nu. Del P del Z. Actually, you can see there's a viscosity here, there's a viscosity here, so I don't even need this. So it's very simple. R over 2 times del P del Z. Okay? So now let's go back and I, I can insert del P del Z from here. This is a typical thing that we do. We go back to this equation. And there's a v mean over here and del p del z here. So I want to simply just get del p del z like this over here. Del p del z will be equal to minus v mean 8 nu divided by capital R square. And just plug it down there. Let's do it. So it will be, I memorized it. So it's r over 2 times minus v mean. 8 new divided by r square. Okay, so you can see in here, so one of the r's uh, cancel each other, and I get myself tau wall will be equal to minus 4 new, why 4? Because these count 4, right? For new v mean by r. This is actually a fairly straightforward calculation, so I got myself tau wall. Well, you may ask me, why do you need tau wall to begin with? Well, here's my answer. Um, when you're communicating with engineers in your career, this tau wall will be important to determine what kind of a force will be on the pipe. That's one. Two, I'll show you something in a minute. What I want to do next is actually something that I already did, and it's called CF. Do you remember this from module 11? I will actually put a link to here. It's called Moody's chart from the Moody's chart, right? F, you know, friction factor. So now I'm going to calculate the friction factor for you. Okay, over there I said that if it is laminar, it was 16 over Reynolds now, right? And I showed you by using the similitude concept, but now I'm going to show you from Navier Stokes approach. Okay, and actually the CF, uh, the, the, the way it's defined is 2 tau wall divided by rho v mean square. And the entire re reason was not clear to you, most likely. Why did you why did I put v mean here? Because I want to cancel this, that's all. My CF will be equal to minus 2 times, well, 4 viscosity V mean by capital R divided by rho V mean square. So this cancels. Let's not forget the negative here as well, right? There's a negative in front of the tau wall. So, okay, so I got myself 8 times mu divided by rho V R. So the thing is, if you remember Reynolds number, it's represented with respect to diameter. So I'm going to simply go ahead and call this d over 2, right? So if I have that, that, that becomes 16 times viscosity divided by rho v mean d. So now you can see that my Reynolds number is equal to rho 
v mean d divided by viscosity, cos d, so it's inverse of it. So I get myself from here, cf is equal to 16 over Reynolds, okay? So now I showed you how to obtain this from the Navier-Stokes equation, okay? And there is also another number called Poisel number. Well, you can guess who, why they call it Poisel. This guy is everywhere, right? He's done a lot for us. So in order to honor his name, this is called the Poisel number. It's called CF times the Reynolds, okay? So obviously this is 16, you know, well, you may ask me, well, why, well, what is this guy doing? He's just multiplying two non-dimensional numbers and obtaining other numbers and putting his name on it and that his number is 16 only? Yeah, for the pipe. But not everything in the real life is pipes, right? We have other geometries. And let me give you an example for you. Okay, so what we can do is we can look at, let's say, a rectangle. This is common in air conditioning ducts, right? So I can have, let's say this is A, this is B, okay? And I will put a link over here as well. So I talked about something called the uh, hydraulic diameter from module 11. Again, I'll put a link over here so you'll be able to see it. But this was, I actually calculated over there. This is what my DH was. Because in fact, when I calculate my Reynolds number, look into that. For a rectangle, what would be the D? There's no diameter. Well, that's what we, that we segment covers, okay? So something to note. But as a function of A over B, I can list my Poisel number, okay? So let's say that this is 0 0.1. My Poisel number will be 85, okay? If it's 0 0.5, I will be 62.2 and this is let's say 1 this is going to be 57 so now rectangular cross section over here by simply replacing this value of 16 by these values obviously in many of the books um, th these are listed so you can see there's also concentric analysis I'm not looking at it in this particular um, class undergraduate class but basically from here you can do your analysis for a duct as if this is a circular section. 